kept walking, tried not to show how much it hurt. People were looking at me funny, or not looking at me at all. Bruises were swelling up all over. Pain shot for me as I felt the crunch of broken glass beneath my feet. A woman coming the other way shook her head and muttered something. You what? She looked at me like I was scum. I stared at her as I carried on, and I wasn't looking where I was going and tripped. It absolutely killed. I didn't want anyone to see I was crying. I shouted angrily after the woman, but she wouldn't hear me. I knew I had to keep moving. I still had a 10 minute walk until I would get home. I was always embarrassed if one of my friends came to our flat. The windows were boarded up and we didn't have proper furniture. It was a mess and most days mum was drunk. One of my mates made a big deal about us not having carpets or wallpaper. After that, I didn't ask anyone else around. I just hung about the streets and parks. When I started secondary school, I made new mates. And there was nothing to do so we made our own fun. We were banned from most of the shops. I got caught nicking once and a shopkeeper held me prison until the old bill got there. They took me home and mum went mad that I brought coppers around. I don't understand why she was bothered. I never had any money, but some of my older mates did. They started buying us drinks, cans of coke and sometimes beer. They shared out fags and I thought they were real generous. I asked Alex where he was getting his money from and he said it was from his fam. Alex was in care and hadn't seen his mum for years, so I don't understand what he meant. He said that he'd introduce me one day. One time me and Alex were having a fag, when he got a call on his crappy little Nokia phone that I'd never seen before. Alex said that he had to go see Dave and that I could come with him. The address he'd been given was a dirty looking house. Alex told me to wait near the door as he'd only be a minute. I saw Dave slyly pass Alex a wrapped up bag that Alex quickly shoved into his bag. Dave looked at me and nodded. Then we left. For my 13th birthday, I really hoped that Mum got me some new trainers as mine were wrecked. But instead she gave me some DVD she got down at the pub. I said thanks, but didn't tell her that we didn't have a DVD player or that I sold them. On the night, Alex gave me some beer and a joint and we got smashed. It was a right laugh. Dave turned up and said he heard it was my birthday and that I needed some new trainers. I couldn't believe it when he gave me 80 quid and told me to go treat myself. I didn't know what to say, but he just smiled and said, this is what families do for each other. And I told him I owed him one and he told me not to worry about it. I hung out with the group more and more. They helped me to see that we needed to stick together because everyone else was against us. One night, Dave asked me to help him by holding onto a bag for a few days for him. I told him of course I would and was surprised when he gave me another hundred quid and told me not to go mess with it. I took it home and hid it. I was dying to know what was in it, but I didn't look. They trusted me and gave me more money than I'd ever held in my hands before. I hid that too, as I didn't want mum finding it and asking questions or spending it. After that, I did more jobs for Dave. Alex said that I was a proper part of the street fam now. He had a phone that only the fan could reach him on, and he was going away a lot, out of town. We had more money and new experiences than we'd ever had. It was amazing. I knew what was paying for all of this. We were moving and selling drugs, but we were doing it as a family. And it felt good that they believed me to do it right. For the first time in my life, I felt like I had a good future, like I was in control. I was moving small amounts. The drugs were already wrapped and I had to hide them in something like a drawstring bag or a paracetamol box. I was out one day when Dave pulled up in his car. He'd asked me if I'd seen Alex. I hadn't. 
He told me that when I did, I had to tell him that it was all over. See, see Alex, you're telling me he's out. All right. All right mate. And he told me I should meet him on Friday at nine at the usual place. He said it was time I stepped up. It was Friday afternoon and I did see Alex, but it was being off on me. I told him what Dave said. He showed me that he had a tag on his ankle. And he said Dave would want me more now, as I was still clean. He looked at me strange. Funny thing is, getting his tag has given me my freedom. That was the last time I ever saw of him. I met Dave. He said I was going for a ride with Jay. I went to go and get in Jay's car, but he stopped me and popped the boot open and told me to get in. No, no, no. Get in. At first, I thought he was joking, but he looked dead serious. We travelled for over an hour. It was horrible. And a couple of times, I started to freak out. When we finally got there, Jay led me into our house. Everyone inside was out of it. There was this big guy on the sofa with a young girl. And Jay told this nervous looking guy to get the stuff. He fetched a bag of heroin and then slumped into a chair. There's a phone. Don't miss the calls. I'll be back in a few days for the money. He told me to take the calls and sell drugs until he came back. I stood there and didn't know what to do. I sat down for a fag with my hands trembling. I was there for three days. I took calls on the phone and all sorts of people came to the door. I let them in and sold them drugs. Sometimes they stayed there for a few hours. Sometimes they were straight off. The nervous guy stayed. He was always high. And I figured this must have been his house. I counted the money I'd taken. There was more than a couple of grand and I kept it close to me. I was starving and bored. So, I was relieved when Jay came back. He took the money, but gave me a couple of notes and told me to get the train home. He said to take a packet back home with me. I tried to tell him that I didn't even know how to get a train and that the packet was too big for me to hide inside my mouth. He told me I should hide it up in my ass. It really hurt. When I finally got home, I was knackered. Then mum gave me the, where the hell have you been? She said she'd nearly had to report me missing and get the coppers round again. I just needed some rest. Alfie, I'm talking to you! And tried to get my head straight. Next day I saw Dave. He told me to get in the car. He gave me 200 quid and smiled. He said, how else would you earn money like that, Alfie? You're with us now. He said he'd take me to get a haircut. He told me that I was doing well and that he was proud of me. Nobody had ever said that to me before. 